So we understand that uh, even though atom is neutral, inside the atom you have charged particles like negative charged particle electrons, inside the nucleus you have protons which are positive charge and neutrons which are chargeless. Now, how do you explain about the shape of the atom or the working of the particles inside the atom? Then we have to discuss about atomic models. Many scientists proposed many types of models. Some models are very popular in the world, some models are not popular. So we will find out which are popular, which are not popular and why they are not popular. See the first one. First one is called J.J. Thompson model. This is also called Plum Pudding model. It, is, it, it was the first atomic model to understand the shape and nature of the model, nature of the atom. According to this, if you see a cake, plum cake, the cake which is having some different types of puddings or if you don't understand what is plum pudding, I will tell you another example like water melon model. In India, we can say it is watermelon model. If you see the watermelon, the red, red part of the watermelon is positive charge. The red part is positive charge. And on the red part, you have seeds, some brown, black seeds. And these seeds are called electrons. Right? So, that shading part, red part is positive charge and the seeds are called electrons. In J.J. Thompson time, we don't know about nucleus. That's why he explained that some positive cloud will be there or positive cloud, you have the seeds and these seeds are looks like electrons. And using this atomic model, he explained that why we get red color when you heat a body at high temperatures. Yes, you see, if you take an iron rod and heat uh, the iron rod for a very high temperature, then you can see the iron rod in red color. Why the red color is coming at that high temperature, this atomic model is explained. But later, the different atomic spectrums we have seen and those spectrums are not explained by this atomic model. So, at last, no scientific community accepted this atomic model. Then we came across another atomic model or the second atomic model Rutherford atomic model Rutherford was a great scientist he was physicist as well as his, he was alchemist also Rutherford guided his two research students to do an experiment and that experiment was called alpha ray scattering experiment a breakthrough experiment in physics revolutionary experiment in physics so how this experiment was happened see there is a lead block this is lead block, lead block. Inside the lead block, there is a radioactive source. Yes, is radioactive source. Radioactive source means uranium, plutonium, thorium, all these are radioactive elements. So, any radioactive element you can keep here. Okay. So, this is a radioactive element like uranium, thorium, plutonium. And it is a slit. Slit. Why we use slit? Because from this radioactive source, so many alpha particles will come in different, different directions. But Rutherford wants the alpha particle which are coming in fine pencil beam in one single direction. So that's why this slit will stop all alpha ray particles except this 
alpha ray particle which is which are coming in the gap so that it become fine pencil beam now this alpha rays this alpha ray goes in a straight line and hits a gold foil gold foil is a very very thin sheet of gold and after hitting on the gold foil there is a screen in this curved shape this screen is coated with zinc sulfide zinc sulfide which is called fluorescent screen fluorescent screen you know what is my fluorescent screen it is nothing but uh, the tube light normally in our houses we use a tube light inside the tube the coating material is what called fluorescent screen advantage of fluorescent screen is that if any electron or any particle hit the fluorescent screen it produce sparks in physics those sparks are called scintillations so rutherford idea is that if alpha particle passes through gold foil and after passing through the gold foil it scatters in different different directions and after scattering it falls on the fluorescent screen and in the fall the fluorescent screen they will produce sparks scintillations and because of scintillation they will understand that yes alpha particle came and hit the fluorescent screen because you can't see the alpha particles with your naked eye you can understand only with the sparks so that was the great thought of rutherford scientist no so this experiment has happened like this now what happened if this is the gold foil this is the alpha particles are coming through the gold foil okay i will do like this in the gold foil i'll keep the nucleus i'll i'll see the atom like this okay and this is the nucleus which is as rutherford don't know so what happened many number of alpha particles coming through it and some alpha particles are deviated like this some are deviated like this some are deviated like this some are deviated like this see, see all these are alpha particles so alpha rays all particles also you can say but one alpha particle going straight and when reaching to this this part it is not hitting see it's not hitting it just going to near to this point and comes back in reverse direction and this incident happened one in one in 8000 alpha particles are alpha rays means when they send the 8000 alpha rays one alpha ray is coming in backward direction straight backward direction then these two students who done this experiment they went to rutherford and told that this was this, this was the thing happened then rutherford declared that yes what he thought about atom it was correct then what he thought what are the postulates he has given 